Testosterone is one of the most important hormones in a man's body. It is responsible for energy, mood, sex drive, muscle mass, and overall vitality. When the levels drop, it can affect everything from your focus and drive to your sexual performance and emotional health. In this video, I want to break down exactly how testosterone works, what are the key lab tests used to diagnose and follow up low testosterone, and the different ways that we can treat it. Hello, my name is Dr. Jonathan Clavel, and I'm a urologist and men's sexual health specialist in Houston, Texas. Testosterone is a steroid hormone that plays a crucial role in the development and maintenance of multiple physiological functions. At a molecular level, the testosterone hormone binds to something called an androgen receptor. Testosterone is primarily produced in the testicles in men and in the adrenal cortex and ovaries in women. Once it is produced, it binds to androgen receptors that we just mentioned. Where are those androgen receptors? We find these receptors in the male reproductive organs like the prostate, testicles, penis, urethra, and also female reproductive organs like the endometrium, labia, the clitoris, and the vestibule, and other organs in our bodies like the skeletal muscle, brain, liver, hair follicles, heart and blood vessels, in the eyes, in the pancreas, and yes, it can help with diabetes even when you treat low testosterone, and the bones as well. This is why every person that is both men and women need to know the effects of testosterone in order to keep their body functioning at an optimal level. Now, given that I mostly see men in my practice, this video will mostly pertain to those men seeking an explanation on testosterone therapy. However, in order to understand how treatments work, we first need to understand what is the physiology of testosterone. That is, how testosterone works naturally in the body. First of all, let's talk about how testosterone is produced, which is extremely crucial to understand when considering treatment options. Everything starts at the level of the brain with an organ called hypothalamus, which produces a hormone called gonadotropin-releasing hormone, or GNRH. This sends a signal to another organ within the brain called the pituitary, which itself produces two hormones that are crucial for the production of testosterone and fertility in men. Those are follicular stimulating hormone, also known as FSH, which is important for fertility, and luteinizing hormone, also known as LH, which is the one that stimulates the testicles to produce testosterone. Again, the pituitary, which is in the brain, releases LH, which is the signal that goes to the testicle and helps it produce testosterone. Once testosterone is produced, it can do three different things. Number one, it can go directly to the androgen receptors in the tissues around the body. Number two, it can get converted to another hormone called dihydrotestosterone, or DHT, which is a stronger form of testosterone and acts directly in the prostate and other areas of your body, like your hair follicles. And number three, it can get converted to estrogen in the fat cells through a process called aromatization. Once there is enough testosterone and or estrogen in the body, signals are then sent back to the brain, which will let the brain know that we can lower the production of LH and FSH. The process can be a little bit more complicated than this, but hopefully you get the picture. We also need to understand that for most men, there is what we call an age-related peak. What that means is that in a man's lifetime, testosterone levels usually peak during the late adolescence to the early 20s. This is why we commonly say that young men have raging hormones. And then after the age of 30, the levels begin to decline gradually at about 1% per year on average. Now, this does not happen to every single guy. There are some that decline quicker and earlier than others. Why? Some experts believe that this is not age that causes the decline, but the accumulation of comorbidities like obesity, diabetes, and lifestyle that play a factor. That is, someone who lives a healthy lifestyle might be able to maintain higher testosterone levels even at an older age. This is the age-related peak and decline. However, there's also a daily peak and decline, which we call the daily rhythm. Testosterone follows a daily rhythm, which is highest in the early morning, and then gradually declines throughout the day. This pattern, however, is influenced by both the circadian rhythm, which is the body's natural 24-hour clock, kind of like an internal timer that tells your body when to sleep, wake up, etc., and the sleep-dependent mechanisms, with sleep specifically playing a significant role in the increase of testosterone levels. Yes, your body needs to rest. Sleep is crucial in maintaining healthy testosterone levels. Again, testosterone levels peak in the early morning, that is around 7 to 10 a.m., and this is why most guidelines and most physicians recommend drawing blood for testosterone testing during this early morning window, and then throughout the day, the testosterone levels decline and they are lowest in the evening hours. Understanding this daily fluctuation is crucial for accurate clinical measurements and treatment. 
getting your blood work in the afternoon after a full day of work will not show your optimal level. Now, how do we test testosterone? It is a simple blood test that is taken in a lab. We typically measure both total testosterone and free testosterone. What does this mean? Total testosterone is the overall amount of testosterone in your bloodstream, but not all of it is active or usable in the body. Most of the testosterone in our bodies is attached to proteins like SHBG, which is the acronym for sex hormone binding globulin, and other proteins like albumin. These proteins bind to testosterone and carry it around the body. But when bound to proteins, this testosterone is not usable in the body. Think of it like money in a bank account. Total testosterone is a full balance, but not all of it is available for you to use. Free testosterone, however, is the active form of testosterone. This form of testosterone is not bound to proteins and can actually enter cells and do its job, like boosting energy, sex drive, muscle growth, etc. This is like the cash in hand that is what your body can actually use right now. Therefore, when measuring testosterone levels, we want to know both the total testosterone, but more importantly, the free testosterone. Why? There are many men who have normal testosterone levels or total testosterone levels, but still have symptoms. And it is likely that they have symptoms because their free testosterone is low. In the blood work, we can also measure the regulatory hormones or the signals that are sent from the brain to the testicles, that is FSH and LH. When a man has low testosterone, but high FSH and LH, it might suggest that there is a problem at the level of the testicle. Your body is increasing the stimulation to the testicles in order to maintain testosterone levels. And when testosterone is low and FSH and LH are also low, it might suggest that there is a problem at the level of the brain. We can also check a lab for SHBG, which is one of the main proteins that binds testosterone and affects how much is free in the body to use. If SHBG is high, we might have a lower free testosterone. When we are following up on testosterone, most physicians also check other levels like estradiol, which is the most common type of estrogen. And we can also check prolactin levels, which is another hormone produced by the pituitary. And when it is high, it can suppress testosterone and cause sexual dysfunction. When treating people with testosterone therapy, we also like to monitor the hematocrit levels which corresponds to the percentage of red blood cells in your body. Why do we check that? Testosterone stimulates the bone marrow to make red blood cells. Red blood cells carry hemoglobin, which itself carries oxygen to the tissues. While the stimulation of the bone marrow to produce more red blood cells is normal, too much testosterone can raise that hematocrit level to dangerous levels, like if you had a highway that is now full of traffic, which could increase the risk of having problems. Therefore, we will very likely check a baseline hematocrit level before starting testosterone therapy, and we can then monitor those levels every three to six months. Another blood work that we like to check is the PSA, which stands for prostate-specific antigen. A rapid rise in PSA after starting testosterone may require a referral to a urologist for further evaluation. Quick disclaimer, unlike popular belief, testosterone therapy does not cause prostate cancer and it does not feed it either. I will repeat that, testosterone therapy does not cause prostate cancer. Before anyone considers testosterone treatment, they must understand that the specific testosterone level that may start causing symptoms varies from individual to individual. According to guidelines, normal testosterone levels usually range between 300 to about 1,000 nanograms per deciliter. Again, that is 300 to 1,000. And as you can see, there's a very wide range. And honestly, not everyone responds to the same levels. For example, I have some men that feel great at a level of 350 nanograms per deciliter, while others have significant symptoms with a total testosterone of 500. Everyone is different. Why is that? We all have different sensitivities to the androgen receptors we mentioned before. Each individual patient will have a different level of sensitivity to the testosterone hormone. And that is why some men need a higher level of testosterone to feel some relief to their symptoms. Not everybody responds to the same dosage of the medication or to the same level of testosterone. Therefore, as physicians, we not only look at the number of the testosterone level, but more importantly, the presence of symptoms and signs of testosterone deficiency when considering treatment. Does this mean that anyone who has one set of symptoms in therapy, for example, if a man has low sex drive and everything else feels normal, does that mean that he needs testosterone? Not necessarily. We do need to understand that in most occasions, symptoms can have multiple different causes and treating it with testosterone does not necessarily mean that a specific symptom will improve. In summary, testosterone is a vital hormone that plays a key role in a man's physical, emotional, and sexual health. 
It affects everything from energy and mood to muscle mass and libido, and its production is tightly regulated by signals from the brain. Understanding how testosterone works, its natural rhythms, how it's measured, and what those labs really mean is essential before considering any treatment. Low levels can result from issues at the level of the testicles or the brain, and the right testosterone level varies from person to person. That is why treatment should be individualized, based not just on lab values, but also on symptoms and overall health. If you're experiencing signs of low testosterone, speak to a knowledgeable provider who can guide you through testing and help you explore safe and effective treatment options.